the eternal gospel. Because the same gospel that saves us is the same gospel that saves 144,000. It's the same gospel that saves the tribulation saints. It's the same gospel that saved Abraham. It's the same thing. Um, and so here we start in Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel, an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water, Revelation 14, six through seven. So the gospel is preached to every corner of the earth here. I think this is an important thing for us to see. Right here, we see the gospel preached over the entire planet during a right, I think this is actually chronologically happening right before or right at the middle of the tribulation. And we see the gospel preached to every corner of the earth. This everlasting gospel. Everyone gets a chance to hear the truth from an angelic voice. So here we see this very same time frame and this very same reference given from Jesus himself. I think this right here is, is really misunderstood, Matthew 24. Um, here, the same, this context is in Matthew 24. Jesus is talking about this very same time frame of the angel proclaiming the gospel. And so this, of course, is the Olivet Discourse where Jesus is, ex the, the disciples asked him, what's the sign of your return? And he gives this exhaustive picture of the end times. And so here, um, 24, beginning in 12, because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Okay, we see that, don't we? <laughs> but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. And see, understand too, he is talking right now. He's talking about what happens in the tribulation. Just, we've talked about this before. Remember after the rapture, we looked at Micah 7, where all the righteous have disappeared off the earth and there is no one to go to, to help you. Everyone is out it for, everyone is, is at it for themselves. Everything's a trap. And so, so continuing here, because the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Okay, this right here, 14, Revelation 14, 6 and 7, that is what Jesus is talking about. Clearly, this gospel would be preached to all the nations. And literally, that is what this angel does. And then the end will come. And literally after this angel and the two angels that follow her or him, because all angels are men, the, um, the two angels that follow this one, after they speak, that's the end. The end comes. The final bowl judgments are rolling out that we'll look at. And so how amazing when you look at these things, when you interpret scripture by scripture and see it in its context, it's just amazing to see what God meant by this. So continuing in 15. So when you see standing, again, he's even giving you the time frame. This angel goes and preaches this right before and right at the time of the abomination that causes desolation, right at the time that the Antichrist is going to go in and say, I'm God. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination of desolation described by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. And then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. And see, more and more, we just see God's word stacking on top of itself. Because we saw the same time, time frame last week when we looked at Revelation 12 and the woman and how then she ran to the mountains. 
And, and so we just see how everything is stacking in this beautiful picture, this 3D picture starts to emerge where we can see what's happening from multiple points of view. And so when we, when we read the entire Bible, a lot of times you're, you're actually reading the same events, but from different points of view. So you, you get this 3D picture. The multitude here who come out of the great tribulation in Revelation 7 are a result of this proclamation. Because we know when we see in Revelation 7, when he talks to that multitude that come out, he is talking about some of the things that we're about to, we're about to read about the bowls. So this multitude that are in heaven, time in heaven is a little bit different than it is here. The multitude that they see in heaven is spanning the entire great tribulation. So as a result of this proclamation, as a result of the eternal, this eternal gospel, the hundred and the 144,000 and the work that believers have done for the past 2000 years spreading the gospel. There is a multitude that come out of the great tribulation that cannot be counted. Um, so it's like the work that we do is a huge part of that as well. And so this is a literal event. This angel proclaiming the gospel is a literal, is a literal event. And the next two angels that we're going to look at are literal events. So the first proclamation of the gospel or the good news was when angels appeared to the shepherds in Luke 2, 8 through 14. That literally happened when Jesus came the first time and the angels proclaimed the good news for the first time, understanding this is that Jesus was what all these things were pointing to. That was literal angels. And this is now also literal angels. We see a bookend here of the eternal gospel being proclaimed that Jesus is Lord. Note there is no reason to not see this as literal, just as the angels proclaiming Jesus' birth were literal. These final seven years will be a time of clashing kingdoms where the veil is lifted. And people are literally seeing frightful and amazing things. You know, we just talked about the seven trumpets. And the other events that have already unfolded, um, we see in the seventh trumpet that heaven is opened up, allowing the unseen to be visible, allowing the ark that is in heaven to be visible. You know, we talked last week about the fifth and sixth trumpet. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Congress was actually talking about that last week. It's God. It, it, the world is preparing for the events that are going to unfold during the tribulation. These frightful events, um, they like to say they're aliens. They're not. They're demons. And so all these things, the world is preparing for these frightful things that are about to unfold. And so what is the everlasting gospel? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy around that too. The everlasting gospel is the gospel. False gospels and false religions have clouded the simplicity of the gospel that has been constant all along. All along, remember, you know, go back to Abraham. What did God say about Abraham? Abraham believed him and it was accounted to him righteousness. And what is what does Jesus say? Jesus um, Jesus who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. When we believe on him, his righteousness is bestowed upon us, just like it was bestowed upon Abraham for believing God. It's bestowed upon us for believing him. And so the good news has always been throughout time. Trusting in God, believing God. Over time, God has revealed himself more and more. And here in Revelation, we see the divinity of Jesus made clear. But righteousness has always been given to those who believe and trust in God. So here we see it in John 3, 14 through 19. Um, we love to look at John 3, 16. But if you look at the full context 
it's even it's even better. <laughs> so as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And so we see here the, the full, the full story. You believe, you put your trust in Jesus and it is a credit to you righteousness, just as that, you know, how, how were they healed when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? How were they healed? By looking toward the serpent. By looking toward the, the thing that was a picture of the sin. That's what Jesus, Jesus became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. All they had to do was look in the direction. And the same thing is true for Jesus. All we have to do is look to him. And he saves us. We put our trust in him, not in ourselves, but in him. If you add anything to it, if you think, yes, Jesus, but that's actually not trusting in him. That's your own righteousness, which cannot bring life. You have to completely surrender. Your righteousness is filthy rags. Your righteousness cannot help you get to heaven at all all. There's going to be a lot of people left here when the rapture happens thinking, but I did this and I did this and I did this, but they didn't trust Jesus. They didn't put their trust in him alone. They didn't understand that when you love him, you serve him because you love him, not because you think you need to in order to keep your salvation or earn your salvation or prop or in any way balance to help him. He doesn't need your help. He's enough. And when you get that, you serve him out of the right motivation. And so here, I just want to show that picture again, because I think it's just such a cool, cool picture, because it's all just like then, all they had to do was look to him, look to it, and they were saved. And all we have to do is just look to him. And this is throughout time, because in the Old Testament, even though they didn't fully understand yet, they were looking forward to Messiah. And they were trusting in God and they were relieving and they were receiving salvation. 